everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and happy Hanukkah. Tonight we are going to play around with recreating one of my favorite colorways ever uh, with a little bit of some variables thrown in to see how much if we change things slightly that'll make a difference on the overall colorway. What is it that we're going to be varying? The type of sock blank. Uh, I love to dye double knit sock blanks and most of the commercial ones that I purchase are double knit which means that there are two strands of yarn knit together on the blank and I use these both from knit picks and wool to dye for and we get beautiful results but will the results vary if we use a single stranded blank where we have one strand of yarn knit through the whole thing or if instead of fingering weight yarn, we use DK weight yarn. And so this is what we're gonna investigate today. We have two single stranded knit blanks um, from Wool to Die For. There is the single knit fingering weight one with the platinum sock, or the single knit with the DK platinum um, yarn. And platinum is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And of course, we are also going to be looking at our double knit blanks. These are the ones that we know and love and are super comfortable with. What is the colorway? We are going to use the Wilton Color Mist sprays to create a rainbow on the front of the blank, flip it over, and spray some black on the other side. This gives us some really fun alternating speckles, and it's honestly one of my favorite things that I have ever created. And I really wanted to do this again, both to look at the different kinds of blanks, but also this way I could include some of these minis um, in the sampler so that way you all could play around with it and get a sense of how it knits up. And also, I had to include some kind of rainbow in this series. It's me, after all. The single knit DK blank is approximately, or almost identically the same size as the double stranded fingering weight blank, um, which means that dyeing these will be extremely similar. I expected the single knit blank to be a little longer, and it is, but it also just has a denser fabric. So if we look at the difference between the single knit and the double knit, you can see that the gauge is really different, whereas the gauge with the DK and then the double knit is much more similar. Originally, I was hypothesizing that having the two strands of the, uh, from the double knit blank would give some additional resist because you have two strands together which you pull apart. But since the actual gauge and the stitches and rows are different, I think that we're going to see a completely different type of patterning of our speckles um, on the single knit blank, and so I'm really excited to see the difference. I am pre-soaking the yarn in some cool tap water with four tablespoons of white vinegar. And we're going to let them pre-soak for at least 30 minutes so they can be nice and saturated. We are including the acid in with the pre-soak because there's no acid with our uh, food coloring sprays and so we want to make sure that, the, that there's some acid so that way the colors will strike to our yarn. I started by covering my work surface with some plastic wrap and then spreading out the two DK blanks. Ha! By DK, I mean the DK weight single knit blank and the double knit fingering weight blank. <laughs> I tried to strain out the edges as much as possible so that way I can get as much dye on each side as I can. And then I started spraying with the color mist sprays. I am using a fresh rainbow set, even though I still had some left over from the first round I bought, but I knew that some of those colors were running low, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't run out of any color while starting this project. I like to start in the middle when I'm spraying the colors, keeping the sprays sort of as close to the surface so that way I don't overshoot very far. Not much color goes beyond where you have sprayed, but it's always worth wiping the floor and then around the edges of the blanks to um, wipe up any excess color. Once we had finished spraying the rainbow on the first side, we flipped the blanks over and then sprayed black on the reverse side. The wrong side or pearled 
side, reverse garter stitch side. It is worth it to wipe your hands after touching the blank because the color is not yet set and it'll spread all over your hands. Near the end of the second blank, I found that my black was starting to run out, so I went and grabbed another can that I had to finish that up with some remnants. Once again, I went around and wiped down the edge a little bit um, to make things easier for wrapping the fiber up. For wrapping up the fiber, I folded each blank in half and then wrapped it up in the same plastic wrap I had laid on my surface. This is really to conserve the total amount of plastic wrap that I'm using. I placed the jelly roll in a microwave safe bowl and then microwaved it on high in two minute increments for a total of six minutes. I tried to block out the single stranded blank as much as possible to get it to fit on my countertop. And then I proceeded to go and spray this in the same way that I had done the previous two. It was fun to see how much the folds in the blank really did affect the way that the colors landed. I almost forgot to flip the blank over and it was a bit more stretched out, but then I went and started spray spraying the uh, reverse stockinette side with the black. I placed the second blank in a microwave bowl and microwaved it on high for a total of four minutes in two minute increments. Um, I did less time because there's only one blank going in my microwave at a time. Once the blanks were done heating in the microwave, uh, we just needed to let them cool completely before we could wash them. This gives some additional time for the dye to heat set um, and usually can take 20, 30 minutes, an hour or so to cool completely. While I was in the mood for spraying, I went ahead and created this colorway on a couple other blanks off camera. All of the colors should be in our blank, but I put gloves on because sometimes there's still a little bit of color on the plastic wrap itself, and this way I can keep it off of my hands. Look at those colors. But look, it's fun, the little bit of black makes the blank look a little dirty. Now, I get questions about if you knit this up, will it look like it looks on the blank? And the answer is probably not. If you could get the gauge exactly the same with the same number of stitches, then yeah, you might be able to get more black on one side and more rainbow on the other. But I don't think that that is necessarily easy to do. And you can see that we're not getting any color coming off. I'm gonna add a little bit of dish soap, uh, finish rinsing this thoroughly, wash the other blanks in the same way, put them through the spin dryer, hang them out to dry, and then we're gonna get ready to unravel. But all that color is in our yarn. Friends, let's leave no dye behind. Dyeing the back of six blanks used three, between three and four of the black color mist spray bottles. Uh, and one of them might still have a fair amount in it, but I lost track of which was the most recent one I opened. And then I also happen to have three almost empty of some blue, violet, and green from a video a long time ago. Maybe the, uh, the Smarties, maybe the Sweet Tarts one. I pre-soaked some Platinum DK yarn in the same water that I used to pre-soak the blanks, and we're gonna try to legit tap these bottles now by spraying the skein. I found that at times when I couldn't get any out of the spray, I could get some color out by really like tapping the, the spray bottle as I was pushing on the yarn itself, and that some color was coming out that way. I did not lay down any plastic wrap because since I'm dyeing a really random pattern, I don't mind if the colors touch each other and if they blend. So I am just using the uh, vinyl table, the vinyl shower curtain as protection to protect my work surface and I'm gonna wipe it down and clean it off at the end anyway. But once I have added all of the color onto the yarn, I then placed it in a bowl, added a silicone uh, microwave safe topper on top and then microwaved the yarn 
for a total of four minutes, but in two minute increments. I like to make sure that it doesn't get too, too hot, um, but I know that there's enough moisture and I know that this is a good amount of time in my microwave, but your times might vary. I'm glad that I took the time to really make a bunch of these, those um, bottles empty because I don't like to leave dye behind and I didn't want to waste the color. And what we got is there's a lot more purple than I thought, but the little hints of blue and green make it less reminiscent of that early dye pot weekly episode I did. And I think it's just beautiful in its own right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wash this with soap. I'm not expecting any color to come out. Our no dye left behind is subtle and pretty. We had the most number of black cans to use up, but the purple definitely dominated. That can was not nearly as empty as I thought, but this yarn is really fun. There are patches of color and the white from light glazing to larger patches, and it was a lot of fun, and we got a reasonable amount of color from otherwise cans that I thought that I was done with. This is also a colorway that I think I would be able to do again uh, intentionally. But part of the fun here was not caring about where the color is pla was placed. I was trying to randomly distribute it and I think I achieved that. The three blanks look pretty similar to one another. We have our rainbow sprayed on the front and then we sprayed the other side with the black. Now black food coloring really does lean purple. So we have these dark spots that look black-ish sort of overall, but ultimately it is more of a deep purple color. You can, it's hard, you can get black with food coloring, you just need a lot, a lot of color. So we already know from our double stranded blank how some of this color will go. We'll have red speckles, some places the red and the dark will alternate. And in some places we might just have more white or more black depending on how the colorway went. But since we have two strands knit together, we will have two matched 50 gram skeins when we unravel this blank completely. It's really cool to look at sort of the, uh, the strands before they've been stretched out because you can see the red on one side and the white resist from how it was knit up and then you can see the black tips on the other. And when you open it up, on one side you might see more red and white, um, but then there are blacks um, in here and the blacks don't necessarily go all the way through. It might stay on one side. So when you knit with this, you're gonna get something that's like mottled red and white with these pops of black in there. And it's gonna be really, really cool. Um, I am curious to see the DK weight unscanned and to see if it's going to feel more pigmented overall than the two uh, 50 gram skeins of fingering weight or what. Finally, our single stranded fingering weight. Honestly, I have never uh, unraveled a blank that had such a tiny gauge. But when you open it up, actually there's not a ton of white in here, at least this section. There's definitely more white in other areas on this strand, but I have a feeling that as a whole, this might, because it doesn't have that additional resist of having two strands there, we, we might see more pigmentation on this one. I'm really curious and wow. I am now going to go unravel all of, all 300 grams off camera and then yeah, we'll come and see what the speckles look like. Here are the unraveled skeins, and I love this colorway. There are differences. The differences are pretty subtle. But we have the double-stranded fingering weight blank, the single-stranded DK blank, and then the single-stranded fingering blank. The differences between the double-stranded fingering blank and the single-stranded blank are pretty subtle, but the immediate thing is that the distance between the speckles is tighter on the single stranded blank right here. And that's just because the gauge was smaller. So the distance between the front and the back of the blank was smaller, um, giving us more compact speckles. 
I also think if we look at the double-stranded blank, you can see a lot more discreet white speckles. Um, and there's definitely white in our single-stranded blank, but there's less, a little bit less of it, which gives the whole blank, I think, a slightly more pigmented appearance overall. When I compare the single-stranded DK blank to the double-stranded fingering weight blank, uh, the spacing is very similar. Um, but I'm also feeling like our DK blank is more pigmented. And my guess is that ha that has to do with the actual resist from having two strands of yarn together that I think just gives a little bit more white. Um, when you pull it apart, you can see sometimes like one strand might have a tiny bit more color than the other, but even though the average is that the, the two, the two are matched. Um, but again, it's really, really subtle, those differences. But something about the coloration, um, not so much of the black, but of the color feels more pigmented. Yeah, maybe it's just that there's a bit less white space overall and that the pigmentation of the specks is actually really similar? I'm not sure. I am so excited that I took the time to do this project and to look at these three different blanks in one colorway. The differences are really, really subtle, but this is something to think about if, say I wanted to do a gradient shawl, if I only cared about it going in one direction, you know, maybe I should go for that single-stranded blank versus the double-stranded one. I will always, always, always love double knit or double stranded knit blanks just because you get the cool, it's so cool that you get two matched 50 gram balls of yarn, which are perfect for socks or a symmetrical project and things like that. I could have wound these blanks directly into the mini skeins for the sampler. However, I decided that I wanted to relax that crimp first. So I'm going to go take these skeins off of the Nitty Nani, soak them briefly in some tap water and hang them up to dry so that way that crimp that I showed at the I guess, beginning of these conclusions can relax. And then I will wind them into mini skeins once the crimp um, is straighter and package them up for the samplers. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, I think that this kind of rainbow and speckles on both sides of a blank is one of my favorite colorways that I have ever created. And so I'm really excited to include some samples of this in the sampler. And I know I'm not done with this colorway and that I need to revisit it in the future. Um, and yeah, I'm real enthused about the different options, subtle as they may be. Um, it's just good to know depending on what it is that you're wanting to create. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and press that bell icon to make sure you have your notifications on so you don't miss a new video. Every night of Hanukkah after sunset, there will be a new video. And you can find all the ones that you missed um, in the 2019 Chemnitz Hanukkah special playlist that will be linked in the video description. If you love the yarn that I create and want to bring some home with you, you can! The Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop is filled with yarn featured in these videos. You can find the link in the video description and iCard, and there's over 100 skeins of yarn in the shop at any given time, and you really should go check it out. Plus, sometimes things end up in the shop before the videos come out, so if you read the descriptions, you can get some sneak peeks. Happy Hanukkah, everyone, and thank you so much for watching.